Hey Warpugs, today we're going to be checking out SCP-178 3D Specs. And our Dodger requested this and he said if you thought the D-Class and the Aquatic Horror Film, the Aquatic Horror File were chew toys, you ain't seen nothing yet. So, with that being out of the way, what is this? This is of course done by the Vulgan. And um, as of this moment... No, I don't know what, quite what to expect. I don't know what kind of what I'm gonna see, anything like that. But I do know that it's going to be potentially horrifying based off that last statement. Let's get into it. I actually remember putting these on in a the movie theater to see things in 3D. But then again, I'm a boomer. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller. Yay. And the SCP we're going to be studying today is SCP-178. Object class, Euclid. I like the earlier ones a lot and when this was first really getting off the ground. Um, now, I like all SCPs flat out, but this one, like the ones that, like below 500 in particular, I like seeing where everybody's thought processes were, how everything has evolved in the years since, you know... SCP really became a thing. Um, so this is kind of like an exploration of this. It, anyway, shutting up. You guys already know that. I've already said it a dozen times. Special containment procedures. SCP-178 is to be stored in a Class 3 anomalous object container guarded by no fewer than two armed personnel with Level 3 clearance when not undergoing testing. Okay. Item is to be removed from containment only with written permission of personnel with Level 4 clearance or higher. Following Incident 178-14-Alpha, all tests are to be monitored remotely in the presence of all personnel apart from test subjects in the testing area during experimentation is expressly prohibited. Description SCP-178 is a pair of white stereoscopic 3D glasses with a rectangular white cardboard frame and lenses of transparent blue and red, left and right lenses respectively, plastic. The item exhibits no unusual physical properties apart from a slight discoloration of the cardboard consistent with age. When worn, the wearer begins perceiving large bipedal entities in addition to its ordinary surroundings. Entities reportedly exhibit a docile and occasionally curious behavior. Reports include entities leaning over the shoulder of persons working and observing them with interest. With one exception, any attempt by the wearer or any other personnel, see Incident Report 178-14-Alpha, to directly interact with the entities results in severe lacerations suddenly appearing on persons involved. So the appearance of lacerations is rapid and continues until the moment the wearer expires. The pattern of lacerations is always consistent with being slashed with three parallel tapered sharp objects of lengths varying between 14.2 and 27.4 centimeters and maximum thickness varying between 2.9 and 8.1 centimeters. Recording and measuring devices used during testing failed to detect any anomalies, including while lacerations were appearing on subjects. Subjects do not report hearing any sounds emanating from the entities. Long-term observation of subjects exposed to the item reveals no lasting effects. Stereoscopic images viewed through the item appear three-dimensional. So it's a FAFO device. I love it. I love these kinds of ones. Any kind of FAFO type, no, you, you just don't want to. You don't want to mess around and find out. You just don't want to do that. You absolutely don't. So if you put them on, just look at the pretty creatures and don't mess with them. Addendum one: Item was recovered on in Tennessee by agent operating as a deep cover agent in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who arrived in the town. Following reports of a year old child being found dead Aww. in her second floor bedroom, apparently as a result of an unusual mauling, Agent noticed a blood stained stereoscopic image of a Ferris wheel adjacent to where the child was discovered. After some searching, found the item under the child's bed where it had apparently been thrown during the child's death throes. Agent then proceeded to call a recovery team to his location. Following the recovery team's arrival, 
He just wore the item and looked at the image, reporting nothing unusual until he turned his head to his left, whereupon he noticed an entity approximately an inch from his face leaning over his shoulder and looking at the stereoscopic image. In the debriefing, Agent reported also noticing several other entities in the room, observing him and the recovery team. Agent refrained from attempting to interact with the entities, and the item was recovered without incident. Aren't you glad you didn't panic? Addendum 2. All experiments are to be logged in file 178E. Lovely. Experiment 178E1. Name. Dr. with Dr. and Dr. assisting. Date, 19. Procedure. D-class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room and via audio and video recording devices. D-class subject will be instructed to wear <laughs> SCP-178 and re <laughs> The D-class man. Ooh. D class personnel get the short end of the stick at all times. Support what it observes until told otherwise. Results Subject D17831, male, 41, no discernible mental abnormalities, is placed in the chamber and told to wear SCP 178. Subject is not told of SCP 178's nature. Subject does as instructed, then immediately expresses distress by throwing SCP-178 away and covering its eyes while vocalizing fear. Research staff instructs subject to describe the source of its distress, subject unresponsive. Research staff attempts to calm subject. Subject responds by uncovering its face and looking around. How are you gonna- still How are you gonna calm somebody when you do- Did they even warn him what was gonna happen? ...to be distressed. Research staff instructs the subject once again to describe the source of its distress. Subject responds by stating the presence of an unfamiliar entity in close proximity to its face the hmm. moment it wore SCP-178. Research staff instructs subject to describe the entity in detail. Subject responds by stating entity was hideous and had too many eyes. Huh. Research staff instructs subject to describe the entity in greater detail. Subject states it did not manage to perceive many details before removing SCP-178. Research staff instructs subject to wear 178. The subject's uncooperative. Research staff repeats instruction. Subject uncooperative. Research staff threatens subject with termination unless it cooperates. Subject uncooperative. Testing is ended, and subject is placed under surveillance to test for long-lasting symptoms of exposure. Subject okay. displays symptoms of mild paranoia for two days before returning to normal behavioral patterns. Surveillance ended after 30 days, and subject terminated. Note. <sighs> it's hard, like, it's easy to feel bad for these D-Class. It is really easy to feel bad for these D-Class, but in the early, in the early SCP lore, the D-Class, and as far as I know, they still are the same way. I haven't, like, I have heard that this has changed about D-Class personnel, but they're not good people. They're not really good people. They even offer this as a way out. So, hearing one got used as a guinea pig and then killed? Yeah. Well, this wasn't very informative, but at least it confirms we have an actual anomalous object in our hands. Mm -hmm. Experiment 178E2. Name, Dr. With doctors and doctors assisting. Date 19. Procedure D class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP 178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room and via audio and video recording devices. D class subject will be instructed to wear SCP 178 and report what it observes until told otherwise. Hmm. Results. D63164, female, 31, no discernible mental abnormalities, no. is placed in the chamber and instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject is not told of SCP-178's true nature. Subject is instructed and immediately begins emitting expletives 
and walking backwards towards the chamber's wall, looking intently at something to its one o'clock. Research staff instructs subject to describe what it's seeing. Subject presses its back to chamber wall and describes seeing an entity standing halfway across the test chamber by the wall looking at the wall. Huh. Research staff instructs subject to describe the entity in detail. Subject states the entity is bipedal, possesses two additional upper appendages, ending in large conical protrusions and a smooth head. Research staff instructs subject to provide additional details. Subject begins describing the entity and then suddenly expresses distress, stating, oh god, it's looking right at me. Yeah. Subject collapses against the test chamber wall, still staring in the same direction. Research staff inquires as to whether the entity is exhibiting hostility or not. Subject states that it is not moving, but looking at it. Okay. Subject instructed to remove SCP-178. Subject refuses, stating that it does not trust the entity. Subject reminded that uncooperative behavior will result in termination. Subject removes SCP-178 and begins looking around the test chamber in distress, stating that it can no longer see the entity. Subject instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject complies and states that the entity is still looking at it. Huh. Subject instructed to report any changes in the entity's behavior. Two minutes and 37 seconds pass before subject states the entity is no longer looking at it. Subject states entity is looking at the wall again. Subject reports no further changes for 17 minutes and 55 seconds. Test ended. Okay. Notes. It seems strange that the thing the subject saw was so disinterested, given the way the item came into Foundation attention. We didn't pick anything up in any of the recording equipment either. I wonder if this entity is really there or an illusion generated by the item. Alright. Experiment 178E3. Name Dr. Th with Dr. Th and Dr. Th assisting. I got a feeling this is when it gets really, really not nice. Date 19. Procedure. D class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP 178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room and via audio and video recording devices. A fractal blue and red image is to be placed on one wall of the test chamber, and a plastic bin containing 10 standard tennis balls is to be placed near the opposite wall. D-Class subject will be told SCP-178 is an experiment in next generation 3D specs. Oh, that's and that just staring a dick at the move. fractal image while wearing SCP-178 will allow it to see animated three-dimensional images. D-Class subject will then be instructed to wear SCP-178 and report what it observes. In case the subject perceives any entities, it will be instructed to throw a tennis ball at them. Results D-51441 Male, 27. Arson, murder, no discernible mental abnormalities. Is instructed to stand at the end of the test chamber, opposite the fractal image, and wear SCP-178. Subject complies and expresses surprise and discomfort. Subject instructed to describe what it perceives. Subject states it perceives two entities standing in the room. <laughs> One, from now on referred to as Entity 1, Okay. Next to the fractal image, with its back to the subject, and the other, from now on referred to as Entity 2, crossing the room from left to right. Subject opines that the person who designed the animation is mentally unbalanced. <laughs> subject instructed to describe and Welcome to the SCP Foundation. <laughs> Entity 2's gait. Subject states it walks using both its legs and upper appendages. Subject equates Entity 2's gait to that of a gorilla if someone put its skeleton together wrong. Huh. Research staff inquires whether both entities are similar. Subject replies that, apart from size, they appear to be generally similar. Subject then proceeds to describe entities fitting the description of the entity in Experiment 178E2. Subject instructed to pick up one tennis ball and throw it at Entity 2. Subject complies. Both the research staff and the audio recording devices observe the ball moving uninterrupted until it hits the floor on the opposite side of the test chamber. Okay. Subject expresses surprise and distress, attempting oh. to back away for 0.7 seconds before severe lacerations begin appearing on its body. 
Appearance of lacerations continues for 4.7 seconds until subject presumably expires from massive bleeding and trauma. Presumably. Presumably. Okay. Trauma. Autopsy on expired subject reveals lacerations consistent with being slashed by three sharp objects, relatively thick and tapering to a point approximately 17 centimeters in length and 4 centimeters in maximum width. Analysis of ball thrown by subject discovers only trace amounts of human sweat matching subject D51441. Notes. Holy f It would appear that these things don't like being disturbed. On oh. the other hand, that ball sailed through the air like nothing was there, and with the death of the subject, we cannot know if it indeed passed where the entity was or not. This is still far from conclusive, but the pattern of laceration matches the findings at the item's recovery site, so at least we've established beyond any doubt that it is dangerous. It's interesting to note that, so far, the entities are pretty consistent in appearance. Despite variance between test subjects, I wonder if any non-violent interaction between the subject and the entities is possible. Experiment 178E4 the, We're about to watch another murder. We're just about Name to watch another murder. Doctor with Dr. and Dr. assisting. Date 19. Procedure. D-class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. Test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window adjacent to control room via audio and video recording devices, mm -hmm. via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Okay. A fractal blue and red image is to be placed on one wall of the test chamber. D-class subject will be told SCP-178 is an experiment in next generation 3D specs and that staring at the fractal image while wearing SCP-178 will allow it to see three-dimensional images. Yay. The class subject will then be instructed to wear a CP-178 and report what it observes. In case What's the horror this time? In case the subject perceives any entities, it will be instructed to attempt to speak with them. Oh, okay. Results. D84291. Female. 19. No discernible mental abnormalities. Is instructed to stand near the wall opposite of the fractal image and wear a CP-178. Subject complies and immediately expresses revulsion. Subject instructed to describe what it perceives. Subject describes one entity similar to those previously reported, standing approximately two meters from it and looking at it. Subject huh. instructed to attempt to speak to it. Subject appears confused as to why it would attempt to speak to an animated image. Research staff repeats instruction. Subject expresses irritation and says, Hello, weird thing. How are you today? In a bored manner. Lacerations begin appearing on the subject's torso <laughs> and abdomen 0.2 seconds after subject finishes speaking. Oh my subject's god. Subject's right arm severed above the elbow after 2.4 seconds. Laceration and subject vocalization stops after 8.4 seconds when the subject presumably expires. Autopsy on expired subject reveals the same kind of lacerations, indicating sharp objects approximately 21 centimeters in length and 5 centimeters in width. Notes. I guess that means we can assume that... These things broker no disrespect. ...that any attempt to interact with the entities ends in hostility, and nothing on any of the sensors either. We're establishing a pattern here. But the main question is still whether the death of the subjects is caused by the item more or in. by external entities. Put more D-class in there. I wonder if subjects not wearing the item can be affected by it. Experiment 178, E5. Name, Dr. With Dr. And Dr. Assisting. Date, 19. Procedure. Two D-class subjects are to be placed Lovely. in a secure test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room, via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Both subjects will have general knowledge of the properties of SCP-178. One subject, designated Subject 1, will be instructed to wear SCP-178 and will describe to the other subject 
designated Subject 2, the location and appearance of any perceived entities in the test chamber. Okay. Subject 2 will then attempt to interact with the entities. Okay. Results. Subject 1, D61955, female, 35, three counts of murder, grievous bodily harm, no discernible mental abnormality. And subject 2, D57321, female, 27, no discernible mental abnormalities, are placed in the test chamber. Subject 1 instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject 1 expresses dislike for the research staff. Subject 2 concurs. Research staff reminds both subjects that uncooperative behavior is grounds for termination. Subject 1 wears SCP-178 and begins emitting expletives. <laughs> Subject 2 expresses distress and inquires as to the reason for Subject 1's consternation. Subject 1 states that there's one right behind you. Subject 2 turns around and states that it cannot see anything unusual. Uh -huh. Research staff calms both subjects by assuring them that the perceived entities are harmless and instructs Subject 1 to assist Subject 2 in making contact with the entities. Just a dick move. Just absolute dickish behavior here. Subject 1 states that there is an entity about a foot in front of her, and that the entity's head is about two feet taller than her. Subject 2 inquires whether the entity is looking at it. Subject 1 replies in the affirmative. Subject 2 attempts to calm itself and proceeds to look where it considers the entity's head to be, and say, um, hi there? Lacerations immediately begin appearing Lovely. on Subject 2's torso and face for 0.9 seconds before Subject 2's neck is severed. Subject 1 vocalizes acute distress. They're getting faster at this. Press and run. And better. Runs towards the test chamber door. Subject 1 attempts to bludgeon the door open unsuccessfully for 5 seconds before turning around and saying, presumably to a perceived entity, no, get away. Subject 1 begins suffering lacerations across the abdomen and torso. Movement, laceration, and vocalization cease simultaneously after 17.3 seconds. Nice! Autopsy on expired subjects revealed two different laceration patterns. The relatively few lacerations suffered by Subject 2 are consistent with lacerations caused by three sharp objects approximately 27 centimeters in length and 8 centimeters in maximum width while the many lacerations suffered by Subject 1 are consistent with lacerations caused by three sharp objects approximately 14 centimeters in length and 3 centimeters in width. Note, we still don't know whether the entities are actually there or illusions caused by SCP-178, but now we know that they can affect more than the wearer. This means that this object is potentially- These guys need to stop! Oh my god, what is wrong with these doctors? Oh my god! Stop it! ...much more dangerous than we initially surmised. Interestingly enough, the two subjects showed different laceration patterns, as though they were inflicted by different entities. That would be what I think. A shame we didn't ask Subject 1 about the number of entities in the room. We'll do better next time. Oh, really? It is also possible that Subject wouldn't have been harmed if she hadn't addressed the entities herself. That's also worth checking out. Okay. Experiment 178E6. Name Dr. with Dr. and Dr. assisting. Date 19. Procedure. Two D class subjects are to be placed in secure test chamber containing SCP 178. Yay. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room, via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Both subjects will have general knowledge of the properties of SCP-178. One subject, designated Subject 1, will be instructed to wear SCP-178 and will describe to the other subject, designated Subject 2, the location and appearance of any perceived entities in the test chamber. Subject 2 will then attempt to interact with the entities. Uh -uh. Subject 1 will be instructed not to speak or otherwise interact with entities at any eventuality. To ensure this, Subject 1 will be told that any attempt to make contact with the entities will result in termination. Well, I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse, but let's go. Results. Jesus. <laughs> Subject 1, 
DA3616. They're just going male, through them. 44. No discernible mental abnormality. And subject 2. D36176. Male. 52. No discernible mental abnormalities. Are placed in the test chamber. Subject 1 is instructed to wear a CP178. Subject 1 uncooperative. Subject 1 instructed again to wear a CP-178. Uh-huh. Subject 1, uncooperative. Subject 2 urges Subject 1 to cooperate for fear of punitive measures. Subject 1 wears a CP-178 and expresses surprise and disgust. Research staff inquires as to the number of entities. Subject 1 states, They're f***ing everywhere, Doc. There's nine of them here with us. Subject 1 then turns to look at the bulletproof glass window separating the test chamber from the control room and states, and there's three in there with you. Look, there's one leaning right over your See incident report 17814 Alpha for more information. Okay. Notes. Following the loss of all research staff in incident 17814 <laughs> Alpha, the containment protocols have been revised. I can't say I'm. S <coughs> <coughs> I cannot say at any point that I'm upset about these researchers getting got because, good God. 057. Experiment 178E7. Name Dr. with Dr. assisting. Date 2000. Procedure. D-class subject is to be placed in secure test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be divided into two partitions in a 5 to 1 ratio with the smaller portion containing the chamber entrance separated by bulletproof glass with a small hole in the middle oh. covered in steel mesh to allow the passage of sound from one partition to the other. Okay. The test chamber will be observed remotely via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Subject is to be told of SCP-178's nature and instructed to wear SCP-178 and attempt to communicate with entities on the other side of the partition. Results Subject D-13627 Male, 52 Rape, double homicide No discernible mental abnormalities Is placed in the test chamber and instructed to wear SCP-178 Subject expresses displeasure but complies. Huh. Subject instructed to describe what it perceives. Subject describes four entities in the other partition. Subject states entities look docile, two of them jabbing the walls and the other two looking at it through the glass. Research staff inquires whether any entities are present in the subject's partition. The subject looks around and replies that none are present. Subject instructed to attempt to communicate with the entities. Subject expresses desire to get this over with. Uh. Subject says, presumably towards the perceived entities, Hello, can you hear me? Before recoiling, suddenly. Research staff inquires as to the reason the subject recoiled. The subject replies that the entities have begun pounding the glass with their upper appendages. Research staff inquires whether they are succeeding in causing any visible damage to the partition. Subject replies they are not. Audio recordings fail to pick up any sounds apart from those emitted by the subject. Research staff inquires whether the subject can hear the entities pounding on the partition. Subject appears perplexed and replies to the negative. No changes occur for 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Research staff announces okay. the end of the experiment. Subject expresses relief and removes SCP-178, placing it on the floor. Testing chamber door opens and two security personnel, agent demand that the subject comes with them, presumably okay. to D-class cells. Subject turns towards door and begins complying when lacerations begin appearing across his face, torso, and upper arms. L subject vocalizes distress and- Vocalizes distress. He's being murdered! Both security personnel recoil and emit expletives. Agent radio is a containment breach. This is kind of what I figured what was going to happen if they had put those shades on in there. Agent begins firing his weapon into the chamber, hitting and killing the subject after 2.1 seconds of being lacerated. Containment teams are mobilized to the testing area and the sector goes into lockdown. Huh. 
Searches are concluded after an hour and four minutes without any findings or further incidents, and lockdown is lifted. SCP-178 is found where Subject D-13627 dropped it. Note. That could have been catastrophic. First time we get to experiment on SCP-178, and the whole sector goes into lockdown. The brass aren't going to be pleased. I think we should come up with some lower risk experiments for the foreseeable future. I guess anywhere that attempts to establish contact with the entities can die even after removing SCP-178. It's interesting to note that Agent suffered no ill effect despite firing at the entity. I estimate it's- That's actually true. Because he had only very limited knowledge about the entities observed by those who wear the item. Experiment 178E8. Name, Dr. With Dr. Assisting. Oh my god, another Date, one. 2000. Procedure. D-class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178 and a video camera connected to monitor. The test chamber is to be observed remotely via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Subject is to be instructed to hold SCP-178 up to the camera and report what it sees on the monitor. The camera is both connected to the monitor and to an external recording device. Pending the success of the experiment, the research staff will submit a request to view the recording. Okay. Results. Subject D61286, female, 28, 15 counts of grievous bodily harm, Damn. two counts of murder, no discernible mental abnormalities. Is placed in the test chamber and instructed to pick up SCP-178 and hold it up to the camera. Subject complies and holds SCP-178 approximately 20 centimeters from the camera. Subject instructed to hold SCP-178 up to the camera so that it sees through it. Subject inquires as to which lens it should hold it to. Subject instructed to hold the red lens up to the camera. Subject complies. Research staff inquires whether the monitor displays anything unusual. Subject replies to the negative. Subject instructed to hold the blue lens up to the camera. Subject complies and reports that the monitor still does not display anything unusual. Subject instructed to put down the camera and wear SCP-178. Subject complies. Subject vocalizes acute distress, okay. stumbling backwards while staring at the monitor. Nice. Research staff inquires as to the source of the subject's distress. Subject reports three entities crouched in front of the monitor, looking at it. Subject instructed to remove SCP-178. Test ended. Notes. It would appear that either the item functions similarly to ordinary stereoscopic glasses and requires two eyes, or that the effect isn't merely optic. There's a way to test that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Experiment I guess. Experiment 178E9. Name, Dr. with Dr. assisting. Date, not applicable. Proposed, 20. Procedure. D-class subject placed in secure test chamber containing SCP-178 and a special mount containing two small video cameras simulating a pair of human eyes huh. connected to monitor that splices both images together in real time to create an image, similar to the way stereoscopic sight works. Nice. Test chamber observed remotely via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Subject is to be instructed to hold SCP-178 up to the camera and report what he sees on the monitor. The camera is set to record. Pending success, the research staff will submit a request to view the recording. Test proposal awaiting approval by personnel with level 4 clearance or above. Addendum 3 Personnel with level 4 clearance are urged to read Incident Report 178-14 Alpha. Reading Incident Report 178-14 Alpha is mandatory for all personnel with level 4 clearance or higher, overseeing or approving experiments with the item. Warning. Failure to comply with Addendum 3 oh, really? is grounds for disciplinary measures. I would like to see if it was okay. from the item or not. I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed.
Goodbye. I would have really liked to see if that was from the item or if that was from something else. I would have liked to see how that test panned out. I... That's just me, though. That's just me. Guys, um... Yeah, uh... They just ran up a body count doing uh, testing this thing out. They just ran up an absolute body count testing this thing. Um... And they lost the entire research staff. That's rather nice. No, it's not, but good God. So they lost everyone in there. That is... Mm -mm -mm. This is one of those things where you just don't mess around and you don't want to find out. You just don't want to find out. And the bad thing about it is they didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Guys, 3D Specs... They just they just chainsawed those D class for no reason. This <laughs> is the name of science. For science, that's all you need to understand. Why would you do that? That is just dickish behavior to the extreme. <sighs> Guys, uh, no, no, that is just dickish behavior to the extreme. In any case, guys. What's going to happen now is I'm going to pop this into render and get this out to you guys as soon as possible. Uh, my, I'm so just like, th they did not do those D-Class right. That was messed up. Some deserved it, but still. In any case, 18 counts of grievous bodily harm. Holy crap, what did you do? Went on a rampage. <sighs> guys, the Volgan puts out some of the, like, it, I love it. I love it. In any case, um, if you'd like to check out more of the Vulcan, all of his links come in the description down below, including links to his merch store, which I recommend you guys go check out. All of my links are going to be in the description down below as well. Go check those out. Thank you guys for joining for me for this one. This was one of the most highest requested videos on the server, and I'm glad I finally got around to it. Sometimes it just takes me a while to get to things. It just really, really does. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing I can say about it. There's nothing I can do about it. It just is what it is. Until uh, I get to the next one, guys, I'll catch you next time. And yes, I am finally recording during the day, and I have the blanket off. The reason I had the blanket up there was because it got cold in here. And then as soon as I took the blanket off, what happened outside? It dropped to 40 degrees. Lovely. I'll catch you guys next time.